Greetings fellow ukuleleans, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new tutorial. I'd like to talk about a Stones tune from 1966 called Lady Jane. And uh, Lady Jane, it's credited as being written by Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. I do believe that Brian Jones had a lot to do with it too. Even though uh, you don't see his name on the credits, he uh, added some really beautiful parts to it. And his influence, he had kind of a Baroque classical sort of uh, influence that he brought to the Stones by playing things like the lute, um, the recorder, uh, harpsichord. He was a pretty important part of the Stones in that era, that um, almost psychedelic but not quite uh, era of Stones, 1966, right around the time of the Beatles when they did um, Rubber Soul, Revolver. That was an important time in music. The Yardbirds were really uh, coming into the fore in England, so... I consider uh, Brian Jones to be a very big part of this song. And um, it kind of harkens back to medieval uh, times in England. Lady Jane, uh, Lady Jane Grey, historic figure in English history. So let's check it out. You have got some pretty easy chords. I was doing a little bit of a chord melody thing that I just actually slapped together just before I turned on the, uh, the video recorder. But I'm not going to show you the chord melody version, just really the chords. Because I think this is an underappreciated... Uh, stone song in that era of the Rolling Stones is sort of underappreciated in the ukulele world. Uh, we're always talking about the Beatles. We're always talking about Here Comes the Sun. We're always talking about Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And there's certain things that uh, internet YouTube tutorials seem to go over um, quite a bit. And I don't want to really, you know, uh, reinvent the wheel. I, I want to do some things that are a little less uh, talked about. And I believe, do believe this song is one of them. So let's check it out. D chord. <laughs> For those of you that uh, are watching my fingers, you'll notice I do a D chord differently from maybe how some of you do. I've talked about this before, but I use my second, third, and fourth fingers. That's more comfortable for me. My big, long fingers here, not as big and long as some other fingers, but they are, you know, kind of cramped when I try to, on a ukulele like this, which has a smaller neck, when I try to cram my first, second, and third fingers on there, it doesn't work for me. That's too crowded. I can do it. <laughs> It's not comfortable, and so for me, a more comfortable fingering is two, three, four. So maybe you guys at home can try that. Maybe for some of you, that would be a solution. So that's a D chord, and then we have a C chord, very easy C chord. We have G, which returns back to D. Standard stuff. That's um, one flat seven four one if you're into music theory those are basic rock chords so that's not too unusual um, but then we have a C chord for a couple measures back to G briefly on D then it goes to a really unusual chord for the ukulele on the guitar it's called an E over G sharp and you can hear Keith Richards um, on his acoustic guitar climb up to a certain bass note we don't have a note that low it's a really deep G sharp bass note on the guitar on the low E string of the guitar since we lack that I'm using a low G uh, tuned ukulele right now I can get a G sharp here and then I change the chord to an E7 which is the perfect solution that's how to get that guitar like sound so that's what I did if you have a baritone ukulele you can possibly do that G sharp without going out of your way so sometimes when you hear guitar music, piano music that has bass notes underneath triads, you know, an E major triad with a G sharp bass note in the left hand here, um, that's too much for the ukulele sometimes. And so we have to either uh, figure out a way to do that or compromise and just get rid of the bass note. So whenever you're dealing with those kind of slash chords, you would omit the bass note if you have to. And it's no big deal. You can do just an E chord. But when I did earlier uh, experiment, when I was making up my little chord melody uh, just minutes ago, I tried an E chord. It didn't work for me. The standard ukulele E chord has this note as the lowest note, and that is the note B. So this is an uh, E chord with B below it. That didn't sound at all like Keith Richards, but when I put G sharp below it, it sounded way more like Keith Richards. So that's what I suggest you do. Uh, long story short, music theory aside, just what sounds good, do an E7 chord, you'll be okay. All right, and that leads to an A minor, as E7 often does. We talked about secondary dominance last time out. That's a secondary dominant situation. Then you have D leading to G, kind of another secondary dominant situation. 
and G leads to C. Yet another secondary dominant situation, five of, which I explained in my previous video. Maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll link to that below so you can check out that bit of music theory. But again, the chords in that part. E7, da, 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 A minor, D, really uh, Keith Richards puts an F sharp below that, but we're going to uh, not even attempt that on the ukulele. We're just going to do a D, which goes to G. Then we have C, and then on the guitar they do a walk down, a very standard walk down from a C chord to a D chord. In this case, the way I, I do a walk down is I do a C major 7. I go. And that seems to work. It's not as deep as the bass notes on a guitar, but it does provide motion. So I throw a C major 7 chord between my C and my D. Instead of going directly from C to D. That's okay, but that's really plain. Um, by throwing the C major 7 in between, it's a little less plain and a little more exciting. Creates a little counter melody, which is nice. Then Lady Jane is an A minor. Back to D. Believe it or not, that is the whole song. Um, yes, there's that intro, the guitar kind of does a... back to medieval times, to Renaissance lute music, uh, old English, old British kind of um, vibe going on there. And I think that's what the Stones were influenced by when they made this record. And they have a couple of the records like this that kind of have that um, old sound. Whenever they used recorder, when Brian Jones played recorder or harpsichord, I think they were hearkening back to an older time. And um, so you're going to have this repeating over and over uh, to make the song. And then uh, there, there is a little run, you know, they do on the guitar uh, replicate the vocal melody by going. I'll show you that real quick. That's involving something called thirds. And so we're on the sixth fret of our C string. We're on the fifth fret of our E string. Play them together, pluck them with your thumb and index, and you get a beautiful little interval called a third. Move down to the um, fourth and third frets on the same string, C and E string. Then move down to the second and second frets. And then do open and open, all on the same two strings, on your C string and E string. And you get... Now the second half of that lick, do uh, fourth fret, third fret. Second fret, second fret. Open, open. And hit a G chord. So here's that part. So there you have it, ukulele people. Lady Jane, a beautiful mid-60s Rolling Stone song that hardly ever gets talked about out there, but I figured I'd bring it to you, give you something different. All right, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, if you liked this video, if you truly did like it. Uh, and click on that notify bell to be notified of new videos. I will link to a song sheet so you can see this uh, written out on song sheet form with the lyrics and the chords. And I will catch you later, ukulele people. Bye-bye.